I'm Denise with Artist Her Paint Party. You have to customize it. Make something that you like. Make it personal to you. However that is. Oh! <laughs> That's so cute! I love his little hat. You could be painting your bunny in. I just so this is a pretty spring bunny, and I think that nice lighter, you know, softer colors look really nice for spring pastel. As big or as small as you want. Hey Nisi. Hey Rach. Can you slow down a little bit? Sure thing. Actually, I thought it was almost looking like a butterfly, but uh, I thought it would be cool, and I had an apple today, so I saved the core. <laughs> That's a great. I wasn't sure if it would work or not, but I thought I'd give it a try. Yeah, I really like that you're reusing the material that may not seem to have a purpose and might have otherwise been thrown out. Right. Well, hi, you guys. I'm Denise with Artist at Heart, and I'm so excited to be here today with you guys. Guess what? We have a special guest event. We have Greater Cleveland Aquarium with us live today, and they are going to talk about seahorses. And I want you guys to start thinking about questions because Maggie from the aquarium is going to answer some of your seahorse questions. So let's bring Maggie on. We have Jim behind the scenes. This is live from the Greater Cleveland Aquarium. Hi, Maggie. Hi. This is Maggie. We're so happy and excited to have you here with us. Hi guys, I'm excited to be here. It's nice to meet you all. So Maggie, can you tell us um, a little bit about what you do at the aquarium? Sure. So I am an aquarist, which means I'm kind of like a zookeeper, but just for fish and reptiles. And I take care of our nine potbelly seahorses. How cute are they? Are, um, can you tell us how big they are? Uh, so these are juveniles. They're only a couple of inches long, but they'll grow eventually to be one of the largest seahorse species. They'll get to be almost a foot long. They're very, very big compared to other types of seahorses. Wow, a foot long. So is, are they in salt water? Yes, they are. They live in the oceans off the coast of Australia and New Zealand. That's wonderful. So you can't find them in the Lake Erie. <laughs> No, unfortunately you can't. You would have to go pretty far to see these guys in the wild. Yeah, that's amazing. And I can't really see the colors. Do they come in a variety of colors? Yes, they do. It kind of depends on where they live. So uh, the ones that live in shallower water that live attached to seaweed, they come in colors that are more like browns and yellows. And the ones that live deeper attached to sponges because algae doesn't grow there, so their colors can be more like orangey and gray. So it kind of depends on where they live. Interesting. That's, they're so little. Now, they are. Is there something distinctive to tell male, female? Um, so there's a few little differences, but mostly the males have a shorter, thicker snout and a longer tail. So that's the main difference. Wow. Okay. So you know what? I, I was making the orange one like the dad and his snout does look shorter. I didn't do that because I knew that. <laughs> oh, how lucky is that? You got it right. <laughs> so the female has a longer snout and the male is shorter with a longer tail. Yes, that's exactly right. So their color doesn't vary depending on the sex. Sometimes the males can have some darker markings, um, but they can be like kind of spotted. You can see our babies have that big white belly and the sort of stripes on the tail and the markings on the body. Sometimes the males can have darker markings on their bodies. So with their white belly, does that always stay white or does that change as they mature? Nope, that just stays big and round and white. <laughs> really? So even when they're a foot, it's still big and white? Yep, yep. Big and huge, it seems disproportionately large for their little bodies, but that's how they're supposed to look. Wow, you'd think they would sink with that. <laughs> no, so actually that's a really good point. Uh, they have something called a swim bladder, which is like an air pocket inside of their body that allows them to regulate their buoyancy, so how much they sink or float. So they're masters of, uh, of regulating their own buoyancy because of that. 
Wow, that's so interesting. Uh, now, do you get to feed them? I do. And here they eat the same thing that they would eat in the wild, which are mycid shrimp. So little teeny, teeny, tiny shrimp. Wow. Um, Simply Shauna has a question for you. How do they protect themselves from predators and who are the predators? That's a really good question. So they protect themselves using camouflage because they're not very fast. Um, they only swim using that one fin on their back. So it doesn't propel them at any sort of <laughs> speed that would allow them to outswim a predator. Um, and their predators, when they're little, little, little babies, is really just anything that can swallow them whole. Uh, and when they're bigger, it's mostly birds and larger fish. Oh, I don't think anyone should eat a seahorse. I'm glad they don't serve them in restaurants. All right, I probably shouldn't even say that, but right? That's not a delicacy anywhere, is it? Uh, well, not really, but um, they do have lots and lots of bony plates inside, so they're very difficult for predators to eat. So they're not usually preyed upon, so you don't have to worry about that too much anyway. That's good to know. So we have a question from RV. How many seahorses do you have at the aquarium? Right now we have nine. And they're all the little babies? Yep, we have nine juvenile male potbelly seahorses. Oh, wow. And uh, how long does it take for them to reach a foot long? Uh, that can take a while, but they can be ready to be dads since it's Father's Day coming up after about a year. Wow. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're talking about Father's Day and we thought, you know, this would be a great way to celebrate Father's Day weekend with some seahorses and you have all males. That's so interesting. Is there a reason why? Nope. That's just the way the cookie crumbled. Interesting. Okay. I love it. Um, so that's interesting. And then we have a question from Kathy Stein. Do you release them to the wild when they grow up? No, these were uh, these were bred in human care, and they'll spend their lives with us. And um, just out of curiosity, how long do they live? Uh, so these are a cold water species. Things that live in cold water typically live quite a long time compared to things that live in warm water. And uh, these can live over seven years in uh, human care. So um, we're thinking probably seven to nine, maybe even 10 years. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Can people have them in an aquarium at home? Um, I'm not sure about this particular species. People can have seahorses at home, but they're very difficult to care for. They're very high maintenance creatures and they're very, very delicate and require very specific uh, conditions that they need to live. So they're really only for very experienced aquarium keepers. Wow. Well, Emma and Ethan would like to know why they are called seahorses. Because they've got that long face ah. and they live in the sea. That's why. Got it. Good answer. You can't ride them though, right? Oh, no, they don't make saddles small enough. Uh, do I, I'm just curious because I've seen it in the cartoons. Do they ever hook their tails together? Oh, they do all the time. Yeah, it's like holding hands. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Okay. It's very they cute. On their tails. Uh, and do the bones, that bony structure go throughout all the way down to the end of the tail? Yes. Yes. It's the only part of their body that doesn't have that bony plating is that big belly. That's a little bit less structured. Wow. And what is the temperature of the cold water that they're in? Uh, so they live in cold water. Honestly, I'm not sure what it is in Fahrenheit, but their their tank is at uh, 16 degrees Celsius. Interesting. Okay. And you feed them tiny little shrimp? Is that what you said? Yes, twice a day, every day. Wow. Interesting. Do they drink the water? Uh, they don't really have to. Um, animals that live in the ocean or salt water, uh, their bodies kind of have an osmoregulation process. So that kind of means that um, their bodies naturally can regulate how much salt and water are in there. So they don't have to drink the water. Their bodies kind of just take care of it for them. 
Wow. Selena would like to know if sleep or, uh, seahorses sleep. They do. They definitely have periods of rest. I don't know if it looks quite like what you think human sleep is because they don't really have eyelids, so they can't close their eyes. Um, but they definitely do rest. And honestly, they don't move a whole ton during the day anyway. <laughs> they rest most of the time. Wow. How fast can they? Oops, here's what, wait, hold on. Alicia says, how many different seahorse species are there? There are more than 45. Five. I think there are 46 species, but I know there are definitely more than 40 species of seahorse. Can they swim fast? I was just curious myself. <laughs> Can they go fast? Not very fast, no. They swim They swim quite slowly, actually. Their, their dorsal fin, so that long one that runs along their back, is really the only one that they can use to swim, and it means that they don't go very fast at all. And Emma and Bella would like to know um, what is the most unusual looking species of seahorses do you have at the aquarium? So we have these potbelly seahorses and then we have their close relatives, the leafy or the weedy sea dragons. Uh, so our sea dragons are probably a bit more unusual looking because they have more weedy looking appendages. Uh, but I think these are cuter because they've got those big round bellies. But that's, I'm a little bit biased. Do they, am I, do they have the sea dragons in with the seahorses? No, they're kept in, in two, so they require different conditions to live. So they're in two different exhibits. Um, we have three of those and nine of these and they live in, in different, uh, different setups. I understand, that's great. That looks so beautiful. They seem to like it. And so I'm just curious, what made you uh, interested in working at the aquarium? Um, I have just always really loved the ocean and sea creatures. And I went on a field trip to an aquarium when I was in seventh grade and just decided, well, that's it. That's what I have to do when I grow up. And uh, that's what I did. So I I've been working. It in aquariums for 10 years now. I've been at the Greater Cleveland Aquarium for almost two years and I really love it. That's fantastic. We have a question uh, from Kathy Stein. She says, you have a long snout and tail, so why are they crocodiles? Oh, I guess somebody just didn't think of that first. I think also, crocodiles yeah, do live in the sea, so I guess it would be a bit redundant. Right, and seahorses are cute and crocodiles can be mean, so. I think seahorses sound sweeter, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would agree. And Holly would like to know how many babies they can have. Ooh, that's a really good question. So what's really interesting about seahorses is that the dads carry the babies. So the female will give the eggs to the male and he carries them and he can have a couple hundred babies at a time and he can have several loads of babies in a season. So we're talking like over a thousand babies in one season. Um, so he can, one seahorse dad can definitely give birth to quite a few babies. So lots and lots of them. Wow. Diane wants to know how big is the smallest seahorse? Uh, they're very, very small. So these are one of the largest species. Some of the smaller like pygmy seahorse species are, I mean, a couple of millimeters long. Very, very, very tiny. Like maybe like smaller than your pinky nail. Like very, very little. Wow, that's tiny. Charlotte, Tatum and Reagan say hello. And they're wondering what are dragon seahorses and what do they do? Hi guys, um, I've never heard of dragon seahorses, but there are sea dragons, if that's if that's what you mean, and they're a slightly different kind. They're like closely related to seahorses, so sea dragons are a little bit bigger and they live in a slightly different place, um, but they're like close cousins and they do similar stuff. They just kind of float around, eat some shrimp and, and make some babies. That's awesome. Sophia wants to know, will you get a female seahorse so you can have babies? Well, 
<laughs> it sounds like I sure, you, go ahead. Go I ahead. sure hope so. I would love to, but that's a, that's not my decision to make. I'll have to ask my boss. <laughs> and how old are the babies there now? These babies are probably, a, let me think. They're probably about a year old. They're okay. probably just getting to be about the size and age that they would be like mature enough to be able to have babies. Okay. Nikki Marie wants to know, do the males really birth the babies or just carry the eggs? It is a true, in this species, it is a true male pregnancy. They actually give birth. The female deposits the eggs into the male's brood pouch. That's why his belly is so big. He has something called a brood pouch. She has a special organ called an ovipositor that gives him the eggs. He fertilizes them in his brood pouch, and then he carries them for about four weeks, just about, um, protects them, aerates them, uh, make sure the conditions are right. And then uh, usually under the full moon at night, he will undergo a series of muscular contractions or spasms and like shoot the babies out of his belly like a, like a true pregnancy and give birth to them over the course of the night. That is truly amazing. And now I'm intrigued about the full moon. So what do you think the full moon has to do with it? <laughs> uh, well, you know the moon controls the tides. Um, so a lot of animals uh, spawning and mating uh, is dictated by the lunar cycles. So it's usually uh, connected to the tides, but also it may have something to just do with the amount of light that is available. And I, I, was, I took a course in Australia at the Great Barrier Reef two summers ago, and I was there for the full moon. And I, I was witness to how different <laughs> um, sea life acted during a full moon. It was interesting, really. So people, some people don't believe that the moon really does have an effect on even people, but with the percentage of the water in our human body, I, I definitely believe that the moon does play a part in our behavior, right? Um, yes, and I mean, for, for sea creatures particularly, it's, it's more than just a, a correlation. I mean, there, it, lunar cycles do definitely dictate spawning events in um in sea creatures particularly those that live in more shallow water wow okay maggie so selena wants to know what is the biggest seahorse uh, you know that's a great question i know that these are one of the largest species the the pop belly seahorse i don't know but i don't think they're in the number one spot i don't know which species is larger than them i would have to double check on that for you that's great so oh let's see diane says do seahorses only eat shrimp if not what else do they eat um that's pretty much it they have a very small mouth and a very narrow snout so there's only a few things that can really fit in there um and they they really do have a very small diet it's not very varied they they really only eat the mice and shrimp wow Okay, that's great. Well, Maggie, we oh, we love having you on with us. Can we see you again? <laughs> I just, I, hi, Maggie, you did a great job. You answered so many questions. And you know what? I love that you were inspired in seventh grade and you followed your heart and passion. And I, we have so many kids watching and I think that's just so important, no matter how old they are, that they follow what they love and, and then they're going to have a great career, right? Cause you should do what you love. And that's, you know, why I was curious. Absolutely. Do what you love guys work really hard in school though. It takes a lot of work. You have to do well in math and science. Um, but, if you want to work in an aquarium someday, you absolutely can make those dreams come true because it really is worth it. This job is awesome. Uh, thanks for asking such awesome questions. Some of those were really creative. Good job, guys. Ma and Maggie, 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 create with Maggie, us uh, when, we're, when we get started. Are you going to draw? Oh, sorry. Yeah, Maggie, when can people come and visit the aquarium? When are you guys open? 
Uh, we're open every day from, what are our hours, 10 to 5. <laughs> um, so any day, come on down, guys. Come check out my seahorses and all of the other cool creatures we have here. There's lots of really awesome stuff to see. And you know, it, today, we're in Cleveland, Ohio today. So if you're watching live, it's cloudy. It's a great day to go to the aquarium, right? And uh, visit and go check out those seahorses. And Maggie, we hope you create with us too. And you can post some pictures later. So we're going to do, I'm going to do cartoony ones. I'm going to do them in bright colors. But thank you so much for inspiring us. Oh, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. It was nice to talk to you. Bye, Maggie. Bye. Well, hi, you guys. That was awesome, wasn't it? I loved it. So um, you guys can do your seahorses realistic. You can do them cartoony. You can interlock their tails. And we're going to do this in honor of Father's Day. So if you're watching it recorded, it might be after Father's Day. But live Friday before Father's Day. And interestingly enough, they birth the babies. I love that. I think all fathers should be able to do that <laughs> at least once, maybe not a thousand, but at least once for the experience, right? All right, you guys, that was interesting. I did not know that. Now I want to go to the aquarium. Maybe I'll go this weekend. All right. So you guys, I always start with a sloppy copy and my paper is going to be vertical or in portrait style. I'm going to use a Sharpie marker, but I want you guys to use a pencil in case you make a mistake. You can erase it. <laughs> All right. So I only use a black marker so you can see it better on the camera. So let's start right around here. Can you see that okay? And yours does not have to look like mine. Yours can look like yours. Pop belly. I'm going to make my belly. I didn't know that either about the big pop belly. Full of air. All right. So let's do the fin. Maggie was really interesting. Little tail. Eyes that don't close. How about that? And those bony skeletal structure that goes throughout. You can give him some curvy lines on his belly. That could be the dad. We'll put the baby over here. We'll make the snout shorter. Thanks for all the great questions, you guys. That little fin over here. You guys, think of some famous seahorses what movies did you guys watch that had famous seahorses in it i know you know some we can put the little lines there some little lines on the belly you guys can always add little bubbles you could put <laughs> number one dad really I should put a thousand seahorses right I should put a thousand little baby seahorses in here that would take all day you guys got something to do we could do a thousand seahorses so and again you guys can make a finding Nemo yes fi RV says finding Nemo yes I love that seahorse does he have a name right is there a name of that seahorse in finding Nemo you guys could do a seahorse for everybody in your family. You could do, it doesn't have to be, I think it would be really cute to do your seahorse like in your dad's favorite colors, maybe um, his favorite shirt, right? Or a sports team. You could put like a little, uh, I'm in Cleveland, like a Cleveland Indians logo on his belly, on his pot belly. So you can make a seahorse Cleveland number one dad. You put number one dad on your seahorse. So that's my sloppy copy. I have, let me see. Hold on, I had to know. Oh, here. So this one, 
I did in darker blues. Ooh, I put some jellyfish and some coral and some bubbles and I did it different, right? This one I want to do simpler and a little bit more cartoony with fun, bright colors. So that was my sloppy copy. Now I'm going to do it on canvas. And you guys can use anything you want to color it in. I'm going to paint mine in, but you can use those solid paint sticks, colored pencils, crayons, magic markers, whatever you have. Now, again, so, and maybe you do it again and again and again. So I always, again, start with my sloppy copy. And then I go to my good one. And you guys, it says unmute for great art tips. So we're live on YouTube, Facebook, and Amazon. So Amazon is my newest platform that I go live on. And all the products that I use, plus more, are tagged to the event. Hey, Google says hi. Hi, Bob. So, um, so if you guys watch on Amazon, you can see all of my products. So that was like one of the number one questions I always had was, what supplies do I need? What supplies do you recommend? And Jim, who's behind the scenes, really helped me on Amazon, and he's running everything. And again, on Amazon, you can find all of the products. So you have to unmute on Amazon to hear. So if you're wondering why that's on there. All right, let's go with the big seahorse. So let's start here, up, around, down, curve, and tail. You guys can make yours interlock, right? You can make them cartoony. You can make them silly. I wonder how many sea creatures sleep with their eyes open. Like, do they most do that? I got to see that little fin right about there. And look, even, let's make this one. We'll make him look down at his son. Hello, son. All right, let's do the belly. And it doesn't matter. You can curve your lines down. You can curve them up because it's your art. Put those little lines in there. So I can make it more like a dad, maybe give him an eyebrow. If your dad has a mustache, you can give your seahorse a little mustache, right? All right, let's do the baby. Put that little fin. Those seahorses in um, Little Mermaid. Okay, so I'm gonna make my little seahorse look up at dad. Aw. But again, you guys can interconnect the tails if you want to. You can use construction paper and cut them out. So you guys, I made these, these separate. These are just cut out and I taped them on there. So look, you can always make them on paper and cut them out, glue them down, right? You can interlock their tails. That would be, I didn't cut that one out all the way. I wonder, oh, we should have asked that. No one asked, do they, do they swim upside down? I don't know. That would be cute, right? You can make them go upside down and interlock their tails also. Now, you guys can add coral, seaweed. I've got some other pictures here. Oh wait, so I told you guys, I studied at the Great Barrier Reef. I took a class, it was amazing. I, I actually snorkeled with a shark. I mean, it was in the water, crazy. Not in, a, not in the aquarium, but out on the reef. So I got this, this is cute, look at this. So, oh, I like seaweed. Good job, Diane's adding seaweed. See, look, this is like a 3D picture I got of sea turtles. But you guys could add fish, you could add sea turtles. Look what else I have. We did this one. You could add a shark. <laughs> you could just do little silhouettes of sea turtles. 
You could do a realistic sea turtle, right? So those are just some ideas. We've done several other projects with the Greater Cleveland Aquarium. And so uh, you can find those uh, on the YouTube channel and the Facebook channel. We did Shark Week last year. So those sharks were from the Greater Cleveland Aquarium. And the Greater Cleveland Aquarium is right on Lake Erie. So Lake Erie is one of the Great Lakes and it's huge, right? You cannot see across. It's not like looking across a pond. And when people see it, they think, what ocean is this, right? And it's um, it's a Great Lake, but people that are not familiar with Great Lakes don't realize how large it is. And even the students that I used to teach, I used to teach in Cleveland, and they would think that there were sharks in the lake, seahorses in the lake, whales in the lake. And so whenever we do something like this, even though we have the Greater Cleveland Aquarium on Lake Erie, these are, again, these were found in um, New Zealand and in uh, Australia. So any details you want to add, seashells, seaweed, baby shrimp, you can put a little baby shrimp here. Um, whatever you want to add, add it. So now I'm going to start, I'm going to use really fun, bright, cartoony colors. You guys use whatever colors you like, okay? You can use watercolor paint. Ooh, I just got, let's see. All right, so we're doing, I'm going to make dad a little bit purple. I was going to do pink, but it's Father's Day. I, there's dads that, I shouldn't stereotype. I'm sure there's lots of dads who like pink. But let's try purple. The reason why I added pink, do you guys know, is because if I do the background blue, the purple is not going to show up as great. Like the contrast is not there. So I'll use a, a much lighter blue now for the background. But I like to make them a little bit different, right? So I love acrylic paint. I'm using acrylic. Again, you guys can use watercolor, which I also love. This just shows up nice on the camera because it's opaque, which means it's not transparent. All right. And then maybe I'll do, I could do, do um, the same purple and add a little bit of white to it. So this is called a tint, T-I-N-T. When you add a little bit of white to a color, it's a value. It's a lighter version of that purple. So when we do this with the aquarium, you guys, we're doing it live before they open their doors. So that's why it's so early. We have a lot of viewers in different time zones. I'm like, I know it's 6.30 in the morning over there in California and Washington where some of our viewers are. So you guys can watch the recording unless you woke up early just for this. <laughs> Well, I definitely learned new things today. And I don't want to mislead you and say only kids think that there's other things in the lake because just last night I did an event downtown Cleveland and um, we were on the lake and a lot of people were from out of state and they had never seen Lake Erie before and they were amazed at like there was no end in sight that they thought you could just see you know across the lake and, and it's just interesting okay maybe I'll do these um I could even do it lighter purple or I'm gonna put some pink in dad let's try some pink so you guys I paint right over this and I'll just go back into it later with my details. Maybe next time we can do the sea dragons. What do you think?
We'll ask them next time if we could do the sea dragons. So I'm just gonna leave the eye white, but you can paint right over and do it again later. Does it still look like dad even though he's pink? I'm gonna do all this. Do your dad his favorite colors. What's his favorite color? Orange, green. Brown. I don't know. Is anybody's favorite color brown? Oh, what should I do the tail? I think the tail is supposed to be purple. The tail is supposed to match your seahorse. The fin, that one little fin that they have, right? What do you? What color do you guys want me to do the baby? The baby boy. I don't want to do blue because the background's going to be blue, right? And I want to have contrast. So I can make. It, the baby the same color is just a little bit lighter so it looks like dad and again it could be a little girl you could put a little bow So I just added the same purple. I just added a little bit of white to it. I can just put a little bit more purple in there. I'm just mixing it right on the canvas. All right, let's add a little bit more white. Sometimes it's hard. I'm gonna mix. Let's mix some purple in. I just mixed some purple and pink together. Try experimenting. That's that's fun. Maggie said she had to take a lot of science and math, right? Well, math requires a lot of precision and science requires a lot of experimenting. Green, orange, all right. Oh, you guys, blue. <laughs> Green, orange, and blue. Well, I don't wanna make my baby seahorse blue because he'll be harder to see with the background, right? I wanna have contrast, so I, and I want him to show up. So I don't wanna do the same color. Hi, Sherry. I caught your interview and in painting seahorse demo. Super fantastic what you're doing. Sherry, thank you. Sherry Lawrence is uh, was one of my student teachers when I was a teacher in Cleveland, right? So we were at Warner Girls Leadership Academy, and Sherry is a um, an author illustrator. And she's a really, talk about, I mean, she's a very um, precise, like she, her illustrations are amazing very realistic beautiful drawings so and sherry wanted to become an art teacher because she was following her passion she had published books and she came to warner and so a student teacher is someone that works with you every single day and teaches the kids and now sherry lawrence is a local art teacher so that's hi sherry uh, that's i'm gonna guess 10 years ago at least right All right, you guys, I asked you for your suggestions and I didn't listen to you, but I'm going to put some orange in here because I have a bunch of orange on my plate and I didn't use it. So even though I have pink on here, I'm just going to mix it because I like experimenting. So I'm just going to put some orange in there. Why not? So I was an art teacher in Cleveland for 20 years. And 
I loved it. And mostly in the first 10 years I taught preschool through fifth grade. And then the other 10 years I taught all the way up through high school. And I was ready to start my own business. After 20 years, I was like, all right, I want to travel the world whenever I want. And uh, I love to travel. So I'm still a certified art teacher. Now I'm putting some orange in because you guys said orange, so. And I'm doing cartoony, right? So I can do whatever colors I want to. You can make that big pot belly white. We can put some white in there. Maybe I put some orange here too. I know you guys said green and blue. So again, remember when you create your creature, your seahorse, maybe you decide to do a sea dragon. We'll do a sea dragon another day. I promise you guys. We're gonna we're gonna talk to them about doing sea dragons. We know when we're done. I'm gonna Google one. See what they look like. Oh, thank you, Sue. I did not know that. Sue says that the Cleveland Aquarium requires reservations. They have slots for entering and you can stay as long as you like. Easy to do online. Oh, Sue, that's awesome. Thank you. Sue's one of our members. So she Sue's been creating uh, with us for over a year. Wow, about a year and a half now. Can you believe it? So she's a member of Artist at Heart paint party subscription and she lives locally as well. So when I do my in-person jobs locally, Sue comes to them and uh, I get to see her in person as well as online. Okay. I'll, I'm going to do the details like the eyes and maybe some outlining later. So now I'm gonna do my background blue. I told you guys I wanted to do mine blue. I got a little bit of orange in my blue, so it's not as bold. Oops, and there's some purple in there. So you guys, I make mistakes all the time. And you know what, I'm just gonna look at, I'm gonna mix in that purple and orange and no one's gonna know. Now, if you did do your seahorse blue and it's not showing up, what could you do? Well. You could add a little bit of white to make it lighter. So you have contrast. I'm leaving a little gap of white in between because my orange is still wet. Plus I like the white outline. So be careful if your paint's still wet to not bump into it. If you do, like I just did, I'm just going to mix my orange and no one knows, right? Shh. You guys just keep going, keep going. And every time you do it, it's going to get better. This is not my first seahorse, right? I showed you guys some of my other pictures. Plus I paint every single day. So the more you guys do it, the better you're going to get. Just like anything else. If you play sports, you didn't just throw a basketball one time and right. And then quit. Oh, thank you, Aquarium. They confirmed, yes, every half hour. That's great to know. And again, I could scoop up some white. Oops, I got you. Can you guys see? <laughs> you love this colorful seahorses. Thank you. 
So I just put a little bit of white in there, but I bumped into my orange. So if you wonder what's going on, that's called an accident. But shh, don't tell anybody. It's our secret. And it doesn't matter because no one knows. You'd be like, no, I meant to do that. Don't tell anybody. Oh, I meant to have bumped into my orange. No. But the point is we all make mistakes. And that's how you learn. Just keep going. So look, I'm just leaving a little bit of white space there. And I can, I can fill it in later, but I like the white outline. I'm running out of blue because I got orange all over it. So I'm going to get some more blue out. So this is a great project if you want to embellish it. That means add to it. This is a different blend. Does it look different? You can, when you're done, you can glue seashells on it. You could put glitter. Ooh, you guys, glitter glue. Make the water sparkle. You know how water sparkles with reflection? Just gonna mix that in there. And I love when you come on camera and share. So if you're not familiar with this, we use a platform called StreamYard and it allows us to broadcast on different places. And it also allows you to come on camera and share if you want to. And you don't have to be done to share. You could just come on and say hi. You can say, you know, I'm in Ohio or I'm where, you know, you can say the state you're in. Do not tell us where you live. Like, don't give me your address. <laughs> but you can say hi. I'm in Cleveland. I went to the aquarium. So again, see, I made my background lighter to make my seahorses stand out. And since the aquarium's, aquarium is still watching, we're going to all let them know we want to do sea dragons next, right? And you guys post your pictures. You can post them on Facebook. You can tag. You can post them on my page, Artist at Heart Paint Party. You guys can tag Artist at Heart Paint Party and tag Greater Cleveland Aquarium. You can um, post your photos in the comments under this video. Hey, Diane, this is Medina. Yay, Medina's not far from me. So how are you guys coming along with your paintings? Are you guys done yet? Are you close to being done? Are you ready to come on camera and share? Yay. Oh, they're good at camouflage. Mm. It would be fun, though. It would be fun to do them. Create them, learn about them. I, I have to, you know, I don't know a lot about sea dragons. I didn't even really know that they existed. It sounds kind of like a made-up name, right? Sea dragons. Sounds like a mythical character. 
something that's not real. So you guys can add details if you want with the marker. You can outline it with black, let it dry um, before you outline it or outline it with black paint. But you have to go slow and use a tiny little brush if you're going to outline with black. I'm going to finish this blue and then I'm going to bring up some people. So if you're new to this and you've not done this before, you'll see a link that says join us on StreamYard. So StreamYard is the platform we're using to broadcast. And we have Reagan and Charlotte and Tatum here right now um, who can come on camera and share their artwork. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi. What are you making today? Show us your pictures. Look, um, do you see those two white things at the bottom? Yes. Yeah. Those? those are two little eggs. And that is a baby seahorse close up. I You put the eggs in there. That is a great idea. I didn't even think of that. Let's see. That's so creative. Um, that's mine. And see those orange things right over there? Um, yeah. Um, oh, that those was bubbles are, on mine. Those too. are orange bubbles because it's for Father's Day and it's Daddy's favorite color. And down, down, like down, some like oh, down, like um. This one. Yeah. Um. Um. No, the other thing. Um. That's that's a, a orange square with a with a Tennessee T on it because um. We live in Tennessee, and Daddy likes Tennessee. And the thing, like that, um, that Mommy was pointing at, that's an egg, and that red swirly thing is a baby seagulls. That's great, the Mommy. You guys are so creative. And and what, what kind of paints are you using today? Mine, red is Daddy's idol favorite color, and and that's that's um what I use for the seahorse. Well, I use red. Thank you for sharing your paint, too. So you guys are using tempera paint. So tempera is very similar to acrylic. Tempera is washable. And acrylic's washable while it's wet, but it, you don't want to get it on your clothes. Tempera is definitely what I would use in the class. Um, oh, look at that one. That's, that's Regan's. Me. Regan, good job. Um, he's, he's, nice. he's playing somewhere. I don't know oh, where. Okay. But, yeah, I thought, I thought that was pretty good for four. Yes, it's very good. Um, when is the next live one? Wednesday. But but what are you doing on the next live one? Uh, I think it's a flag. I think we're doing um, some. I think the flag with the eagle. Did you see that picture where the flag turns into the eagle? Wait, did it while we do a eagle? He looked at the picture the other day. Yeah, he That's did. We'll see you guys Wednesday. And send me pictures. Wait, um, do, but on the hippo one, did we do live on the hippo? Mm -hmm. But what was the Valley Force? I love um, the, the Valley Force live art class we did. With you, well, the very first live you guys I did was on March 16th of 2020. But I don't know the very first one you guys did. She, she does so many that would be confusing. Yeah, I mean, I've done, I think I've done. I think it was the panda one. That's the one I think we did well. You guys just remember that because I painted my face. <laughs> yeah, we didn't do that one. Hey, tell her, bye. Have a good day. Thank you, guys. I'll see you later. Please paint. One day, yes. Um, I think um, I think you got it on your lip. Oh, I would not be surprised. It's all over. So, have a happy weekend. Have a happy. Wait, do you have a father? My father passed away, but I still celebrate Father's Day. So mm -hmm. I thought, you know, I, I, I celebrate all the fathers in the world. Mm. So have a happy weekend. Have a happy you guys. Weekend. Have fun. Thanks for creating with me. Bye, girls. Bye. Bye.
Okay, who do we have here? Hey, Amelia! Amelia and Mickey. <laughs> oh, come closer. Well, that looks great. That color is great. Is that um like a a purple blue? What color is that seahorse? The seahorse is actually purple mixed with teal. Teal. It's a really cool color. So you mix teal and purple. Amelia is very good at experimenting, right? You experiment a lot. I know you do a lot of the projects in clay. Are you using uh, acrylic today? Yeah. And what do you have in your hand there? I painted this horse. Nice. Well, yeah, see, so you can see how the horse, the face resembles the seahorse with the snout, right? Mm -hmm. And kind of the hair, the mane of the horse looks like the, you know, the scales on the seahorse. That's awesome. And yay, thanks for joining us, Amelia. Amelia just got out of school. So you guys, the the people that you just saw on camera, those are our members. So they are very familiar with um, coming on camera and sharing with us. And just so you know, if you wonder what's going on. So we have a membership group and we go live every single week week in our membership. And, uh, and then we also do these bonus free uh, classes as well with people in our community as well as across the country and Greater Cleveland Aquarium. I think this is our fourth. I think this is our fourth event with you guys. I started live March 20th, no, March 16th of 2020 and connected with the Greater Cleveland Aquarium to collaborate. And again, they go live from the aquarium and I'm live at my house and uh, and we create together and it's so much fun. So if you want to come on, all you have to do is click the link uh, that says StreamYard and you can come on and share your artwork with us. If you're watching it recorded, you guys can post pictures on the Artist at Heart Paint Party page. You can post pictures at the Cleveland Aquarium, whether it's on Instagram, tag us. Instagram or Facebook, and now I'm on Amazon as well. And maybe Jim can give the, you guys the link uh, to the Amazon page. You guys can check out all the supplies that I recommend. So thank you. Um, and then, you know what I'm going to do now, you guys? I'm going to do the black details. So... So again, if you're going to paint your details on, which I am because my paint's still pretty wet, use the smallest brush you have. Okay. Let's see how this one is. So let's do, so I'm going to make dad looking down. I'm going to put some lines in here. So the details, you want to add the details later, right, at the end. Do the baby. I thought you guys were going to put some baby shrimps on there for them to eat. You can put little baby, little baby shrimps floating around. So you can outline the entire thing in white if you wanted to, or black. It really just depends on the colors that you chose to use. Now, if you guys, now to have balance, I'm going to put more black and dad over here. So 
See, it gives it a little bit more balance. So it makes the artwork go together a little bit more, right? You could put dad. Can you read that? It's so tiny. It says dad. Okay, if you guys want to do bubbles, let me see if I have some white paint left. You could take the cap to something. I gotta find my white paint. I'll you I'll do yellow bubbles because I have a ton of yellow here. Okay, take a cap to something. And you can do a print of a circle. Now it would look better in white, but I can't find my white right now. See that? There's a little yellow bubble. So you could do bubbles, right? Seaweed. If you don't have green paint, you can make some with yellow and blue. Add some seaweed. Does that look green enough? You could put little shrimp in there again, right? And if you guys, so do whatever you want. You can write something. You can put a banner, number one dad, number one dad, happy Father's Day. You can put your whole family in there. So you guys got to, oh, I forgot. Think, think, out, so we've been doing this since day one. Think outside the box. Think outside the Amazon box, you guys, right? What's in the box today? Well, I always do it. What's in the box, you guys? <laughs> What's in the box? All right, real quick, because, because, because these are one of my favorite products, you guys. What's in the box? If you love mess-free products, right? You could see the kids love to paint. I love to paint, too. These are tempera solid sticks. These are... And I learned about it from my members. They told me about these. I'm like, these are the amazing. We did not have these when I was an art teacher. Okay, I wish we did. But real quick, because I have this, I'm going to swap out my painting here. So I'm going to show you guys how easy these are to use, if you've never seen these. So these are solid paint sticks, right? And if you don't want a mess and you just want to give your kids the pack of stuff, you can use crayons, color pencils, magic markers, right? All those things are great. These, look at all these colors. Ooh, I love color. So these are just solid paint sticks, you guys. And the cap comes off and you twist it and you color. Now my hands, you guys, are messy, right? But these, are not messy. I could do the whole thing. And they just glide on. It's pretty amazing. They're just really easy to use. They color so nicely and they're neat. So, so many times, especially when you guys come on and I see, sorry, the mess. You know, especially when we have a bunch of kids. I have so many times the parents are having like a party with the kids and the kids are all over. And, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys made a mess. So I do have like my favorite mess free supplies. And this is one of them. 
So it takes about two minutes to dry. So right now it's just a little bit wet. But look at how, look at that, right? And then you just turn it back down and cap it. Make sure you hear it click. I made the mistake of not capping it tightly and it dried out. So it will dry out. They're really, they, they're paint markers, but you gotta cap them. All right, so you guys, who said before to do it green? Oops, oops, that's what I get, hold on. See, I told you I was messy. I'm gonna do green and then we'll be done. Just cause I, you guys asked before and then I'll just leave the background, but I just wanna show you green. So green and orange. And again, maybe you do your seahorse, like, so Cleveland Browns, the colors are orange and brown. So I could do this seahorse, like if your dad loves the Cleveland Browns or any sports team, you know, whatever. What season is it right now? Basketball, baseball. You could do your dad's seahorse in his favorite sports colors. I don't know. <laughs> See, you know, I'm talking about football. I know it's not football season. It's baseball season, and I think some basketball is going on. So let's see, Cavs colors are navy blue and gold and orange, I think. All right, I just wanted to show you guys, there's a million ways you could do this, right? So. Think outside the box, be inspired, don't give up, keep trying, do it again, do it again, do it again, till you love it. Make as many as you want, make them for your family members, your grandfather, your uncle, give them as gifts, give them to the Amazon guy. You guys have been giving my paintings away. Every time the Amazon guy pulls up, I give him a painting, if I can catch him. So anybody else want to come on camera oh we have natasha sage and cora here yay they get to share with us hey girls hi hi so this this is mine i made a warm colored seahorse and a cool colored seahorse and if you look really closely up there we use glitter glue for bubbles also my official signature now is nk with the heart I love it. Now, for some people that, that don't know, real quick, can you tell us what warm colors are and cool colors? So, warm colors and cool colors are basically the two different kinds of colors on in the rainbow. Warm colors are reds, oranges, and yellows. Cool colors are greens, blues, and purples. Very good. Thank you. All right, let's see the next one. We have This one's mine. It has my initials on it. And I cut my seahorse out. I love with, it. Oh. With so a big you, rock with a sea anemone on it. So you made your sea, your little white seahorses on white paper, and you colored them in. What would you use to color them in? Pencil. Color pencil? And then you cut yeah. them out? Uh-huh, and then put them on blue paper. I cut everything else out and colored them in. And this is some seaweed those two things are coral sea anemone on a rock and their glue bubbles i love it that's great okay. Sage. Got to yeah, you remember the green drives clear i know i just want to see that you want to show us yours yes so so far this is mine Oh, you're cutting yours out too. Wow. So my seahorse is blue and pink. Very like color. Okay, and I have to tell you, you did an amazing job cutting out all those ridges on that seahorse. I know that took a long time, didn't it? Uh huh. Yeah. I even outlined it so in case I got into the black line, it wouldn't like make it this off. Yes, it looks And great. then I just finished making the rock and the seaweed. That looks amazing. You're, you guys, are, you girls are doing great. Are you going to give them to your dad for Father's Day? No, I already have a Father's Day card. Oh, okay. You're great. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Bye. 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 Hi, girls. Emma. Um, okay, so I'm doing digital art today because why not? 
jacket, but this is mine. It's kind of hard to wow. see. <laughs> oh, it is hard to see. Wow. It's because it's outside, but okay. I can hold them. I love it. That's digital art. It's kind of hard to see. Can you see it at all? Yeah. That is amazing. When I send you a picture, you will hopefully be able to see better. I added an axolotl. Oh, oh, that's so cute. What is that? Axolotl. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. And then here's mine. I have two little guys and a mom. Or a dad. Aww. Dad. And then there's seaweed and a little school of fish. And then I also have an axolotl. Her name oh my is That's so wait, let me see your baby <laughs> It's your baby up close. I gave her the It's mixed oh. me. This one is pencil. This one is marker, and then this one's paint. Watercolor. And then how about in the upper corner? I, I can't see those. These? Yeah. Yes. They're watercolor. Watercolor. That looks so nice. Thank you. Beautiful girls, as always. Amazing. Thanks, you guys. Have a great Father's Day. Thank you. You too. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. I'm Abella. Hey, Holly Ann. Oh, there she is. Hi. Hi. Here's my painting. This is the boy. No way. That's amazing. Holly Ann, that looks amazing. What are you using to color? What do you, what's your, what are you using? Um, I'm using acrylic paint, and those paint What's sticks that you're talking about, I have glitter yes. ones. You have glitter ones? I have glitter. Yeah. I love your t-shirt, too. Hold up that bucket. I want to see what's in the bucket. Is that the water? What is that? What's in your bucket in front of you? This is, this is the water. A wa okay, that's a really pretty blue. <laughs> that's a really, really pretty <laughs> blue color water. So there's no seahorses in there, are there? <laughs> in the water. I'm kidding, Holly. All right, hold up your painting one more time. I want to see it again. Hold up your painting. That is fabulous. I just love it. You did a great job. Have you been to the Greater Cleveland Aquarium? Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm going to try to get there soon. So thanks for creating with us. Zai, you want to show us your picture? I know your mom's creating with I'm you. you not to... kind of... That looks amazing. You're both doing so fabulous. Take That's your time. Back the water. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank that you. looks great. <laughs> Taking your time. See, you guys don't have to keep up with me. I love it. All right, you guys, happy have a great weekend. Enjoy your Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Bye. So you see how they take their time? You don't have to keep up with me, right, you guys? Um, so just think outside the box. Keep creating. Use whatever you want. It could be your iPad. It could be your colored pencils. It could be a regular pencil. Maybe you don't have art supplies. You can use a pencil or a pen or a highlighter, right? You can do sidewalk chalk outside. Just do what you like. Have fun. Relax. And um, be kind. So... Be happy, make art. I'm Denise. Jim is behind the scenes helping out. He's the producer. Thank you, Jim. And thank you, Greater Cleveland Aquarium and Maggie for teaching us about seahorses today. And we will see you again real soon. Bye, you guys. Thank you.